My name is Adam Krimble. I'm a lecturer of digital history at the University of Hertfordshire and I'm one of the winners of the 2015 British Library Labs competition. My project involved building some casual games that allowed us to get some extra information about the images in the British Library's digital image collection. And there's a million of these images that have been extracted from 19th century texts. And we don't know as much about those as we'd like to. So what we wanted to do was to combine the act of gameplay, playing a simple video game, with the process of tagging these images. So our task really was to uh, build some games to let people try out this activity and see what response we got from that. The reason that I came up with video games as an idea for um, engaging with crowdsourcing is because I think it really taps into the, a younger generation of people that aren't often uh, engaged with crowdsourcing as it is. I think a lot of the crowdsourcing websites are popular with an older demographic and I think there's just a really big opportunity there to tap into that new audience. The process of building these video games now is a lot easier than it was a few years ago. You can really get up and running in a couple of days if you've got some basic programming skills. There's also a, a large amateur video game making community out there in the world and these people are building games in their spare time for fun. So what we did was we hosted what's known as a game jam and we posed our challenge out to the world and encouraged people to build a game that would make crowdsourcing fun. So one of the entries that we got from the G game jam was called Art Treachery, which was made by uh, someone from Germany named Janusz. And his game was based around the idea of going into a museum and stealing a piece of art. So he was drawing on this idea that images appear in galleries. An example that you might be tasked with in Art Treachery is to go in and steal an image that's got an animal on it for example. So you go around this virtual gallery trying to avoid the robot guards and when you find the image you're looking for you steal it and you take it back and you get rewarded for that. It's, it's really drawing on this idea of not getting caught but at the same time we're getting information that we need. So the second game was called Tag Attack and this came in from uh, a participant in Spain named Antonio and Antonio's idea was to uh, really to use speed to get people to make decisions quickly. And this was his idea for uh, making it challenging. So he had a little fox character who would trot out uh, one of the images from the collection. And before he got to the edge of the screen, you had to decide uh, whether or not that image belonged to one of four categories. So again, we're getting images here. We're getting information about these images uh, through the process of gameplay. So one of the really exciting parts of this project actually is we've built a replica of a 1980s style arcade machine. So the big wooden thing with the joystick and the, and the buttons. And we built this all with a Raspberry Pi, which is a 40 pound computer actually. So this is a, a really inexpensive way to build what, when we were children anyway, looked like a really impressive computer. So we're hoping to get people to engage with these games in a public place on this arcade machine and really dig in with that idea of playing with cultural heritage. One of the things I'm hoping to discover actually is whether or not people will engage with these physical machines, this arcade machine, in a way that they wouldn't necessarily do with a website. One of the challenges with a website, everybody thinks, okay, I'll put it online, it's available for everybody. But because it's available for everybody, nobody goes to look for it. And I think there's something to be said for stumbling across an interaction like an arcade machine in a place that you're not necessarily expecting to see it. So our plan for the arcade machine is we're hoping to get this into some public places where people who are interested in cultural heritage, interested in history, are already going. We've got in touch with a couple of museums already. We are hoping to get in touch with more people, museums, libraries, places where uh, this might attract the right type of audience. So if anybody is interested in uh, putting something like this in their space, then please do feel free to get in touch with British Library Labs.